No, the title isn't wrong. Today, I want to talk about why a ketogenic diet is suboptimal for maximum athletic performance. Now, the reason why I'm making this video was because uh, one of my subs asked a very relevant question about you know, starch consumption and carbohydrate consumption because he engages in high-intensity uh, sporting activities. I believe it was racquetball and some other things, but you know the, the details don't really matter in that regard. And there are certain things about ketosis and ketogenic diet that are actually suboptimal when it comes to maximal or maximum athletic performance. And as you see, I'm not a an acolyte of you know ketogenic diet for everything. So today I want to focus on the specific aspects of the ketogenic diet that aren't really that great for optimal athletic performance, sporting performance. And there's some simple reasons for this. And I'm going to be oversimplifying things here because a lot of it comes down to some fairly complicated chemistry. And if you're really interested in the details, I'll be posting links in the future. If you're really interested, I can go into greater detail in the, in the actual chemistry behind it. But I want to keep this overview simple so people can get the basics. So basically, the body has three energy systems, more or less. And the first energy system the body has is really only used for very briefly. And after that, it switches over to something else. This energy, uh, this, it's basically a unit of energy, is called ATP. That stands for uh, adenosine triphosphate. And so, for example, if you do one really heavy squat or one really heavy uh, press on the bench, bench press, or you jump really high or you hurl a heavy ball once, that's your ATP, adenosine uh, triphosphate, that's going to be used up. Once you use that up, the preference of the body is to switch over to, to the process of glycolysis, that is using glucose, uh, specifically glycogen in the, muscle, uh, in the muscles, uh, as a preferred energy source. And most activities involving intense athletic performance, you know, duly noted, go beyond the ATP level of just using it, uh, you know, one ATP, boom, and then you move into glucose. Um, almost everything involving intense uh, sporting activity, athletic activity, you have to go through multiple uh, movements, repetitions, etc. So ATP here isn't all that relevant. It might be a, a separate topic for a separate time. So when it comes to multiple repetitions, say in the weight room, or intense sprints, and you know, racquetball, you're moving really quickly back and forth and what have you. <clears throat> These are going to be anaerobic activities, meaning there's no, there won't be the presence of oxygen to, oxygen to perform these activities. And so in this case, the preferred uh, source of energy, fuel for these activities, is glucose through glycolysis. And you're going to be using your muscle glycogen to perform these activities, whether it's, you know, 8, 10 reps, uh, reasonably heavy reps in the gym, sprinting back and forth on the racquetball court, uh, intense sprints on the basketball court, uh, chucking the, the basketball at a really uh, fast speed, etc. Basically, your, your body is going to prefer glucose. In fact, it's going to require glucose for these activities. Why? Because these activities are anaerobic. Uh, you don't have the presence of oxygen in order to, to execute these things. And here's why ketogenic diets generally aren't optimal for maximal athletic performance. When you're in ketosis long term and you're, perform you're using the ketogenic diet, your glycogen res reserves are more or less depleted. If you're doing it right, you're going to have almost no muscle glycogen. And you can tell if you're particularly lean, your muscles might appear flat, for example. And your body is basically clinging desperately to whatever glucose it can keep because at the end of the day, your brain still needs about 40 grams of glucose. A lot of this can be synthesized through gluconeogenesis. I've talked about this before. And the remains uh, of glucose or glycogen in the liver, but it's not going to have extra reserves if you're hardcore ketogenic and have been for a while of the extra reserves of glycogen or glucose to draw upon for these kinds of intense multiple repetition activities, such as, you know, sprinting back and forth the racquetball court, um, moderate re heavy repetitions in the gym, etc. So you're going to be empty, right? The fuel that you need for these anaerobic activities isn't going to be there. And remember, uh, fat can only be used 
as an energy source if it's in an oxidate if it can be oxidated that is the environment has to be aerobic um, the light jogging for example you can use fat uh, fast sprints up the hill you can't um, seven eight heavy reps in the gym you can't use fat to fuel that uh, sprinting back and forth on a racquetball court you can't use lipids you can't use lipolysis the process of lipolysis to fuel this so basically when you're ketogenic there are certain activities that are going to suffer in terms of performance so basically what i'm saying is if you want maximum athletic performance and you're you know really intense and you're doing it you know 20 hours a week or whatever and i think this guy described himself as doing that uh you're not going to get optimal results you're going to get suboptimal results from ketogenic diet as for myself um parting yesterday which was just a disgusting i don't think i'm going to carb up like that ever again disgusting carb up day i ate so much shit I really feel like shit i'm fasting today by the way uh the, over time, I've become, as I get older, less concerned with maximum performance and what have you and, and maximum muscularity and maximum strength. For me, I only really do one anaerobic activity that's uh, lifting weights in the gym. Um, and when I'm ketogenic, yeah, I have to drop some some weight, particularly, you know, on heavy things like squats and, and deadlifts and, and bench press, you know, sometimes five and then if I'm really tired, you know, 10 kilos less than I normally would. And I certainly can achieve maximum performance, that being because I'm always, not always, most of the time in a light caloric deficit. So I look at all this from a perspective of health. I'm just interested in preventing muscular atrophy. Uh, when I do engage in, um, say, cardio, it tends to be aerobic, you know, light jogging, uh, if it's on a grassy surface, to, or even fast walking because I got bad knees. So I'm not... I'm pretty sedentary. I don't do a ton of, of movement all the time. And I'm also not striving for optimal. I'm basically 40. I'm not opt striving for optimal results in the gym in terms of increasing my strength. My heyday is behind me. And even so, I think I'm, I'm decently strong for my age. And, you know, it's not a primary concern. So when I do ketosis or I'm ketogenic, I'm not trying for the best performance possible. But maybe you're not like that. Maybe you're a lot younger. Maybe you're five, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years younger. Maybe you're constantly active. Maybe you're, you're, you have aspirations to, or at least hobby aspirations of increasing your athletic performance, uh, getting really strong, all these things. I would say that overall there might be some exceptions because of the basic way the body works in terms of its chemical reactions, the metabolism. Ketogenic diet is not optimal because once you get through ATP, your body tends to prefer uh, glycolysis and using glycogen reserves for these really intense activities. Uh, I know for a fact when I've been just eating for long term, you know, carbs, I'm, I'm stronger at the gym, I have more energy for that. It's just the, the way it is. That's how the body works. But that's not my optimal, that's not my goal now. And I don't think also long term it's not my goal. I'm not trying to be super strong anymore, or try to get the, you know, super crazy lifts done for my standards. I've had a lot of injuries. A minor shoulder injuries. I had my my intestinal my abdominal wall tore open. And my intestines spilled up, with uh, the result being the the hernia. I had a back injury, a really bad one, a couple of year, years back in the early 30s. Uh, no, I'm just not. You know, I'm just trying to do this for health reasons mostly. So, if you want optimal athletic performance, ketogenic diet is, I would say, is probably not the best idea. And in any event, if you're really active and you're consuming starches, I would just say maybe move away from processed starches like bread and pasta, stick to whole grains, uh, things that are just, you know, basically torn straight from the earth, um, some limited fruit consumption and things like that. Um, but even so, even if you were to consume bread, if you're constantly active, you know, in 20, 30 hours of intense activity, you're going to be using that. You're not going to... First off, it, the, the glycogen is going to be stored in your muscles. You're going to be using that glycogen all the time. You're probably not going to put on weight or get fat or anything like that. Um, ketogenic diet tends to be much better for sedentary people like me. I spend a lot of time sitting on my ass, whether it's making videos or, or, edit, or, or editing some, some document that's sent to me. And, you know, my cardio is limited to, to light jogging or fast walking and my... Uh, anaerobic activity tends to be just lifting in the gym sometimes. So maximum athletic performance and ketogenic diet don't mix well together. But 
Um, that doesn't mean that you can't modify your diet a little bit. You can choose days in which you decide to carb up or, or carb down or whatever. <clears throat> if you have a day when you're not going to be doing particularly strenuous activity, there's no reason why you could, can't lower the carbs. If that's something you want to do, I'm not saying that you have to. And there's something else I want to mention that oftentimes maximum athletic performance, particularly in the gym, has very little to do with health. I mean, the strongest I ever was was when I was you know, overweight, eating massive quantities of food, uh, lots of carbs whenever I felt like it. I was strong as hell for my standards. Um, and, you know, was it worth it? No, my health wasn't particularly great. Uh, oftentimes, maximum athletic performance doesn't have that much to do with, with basic health. But uh, they're, they're two different things. So my, my aim as I get older is just to maintain my health more or less so I don't stop, suffer from some horrible degenerative condition or whatever. Let's just hope, pray to the gods. <clears throat> and my interest is not maximum lifts or fat, uh, being as fast as possible. If that's your interest, then I would probably stay away from, from ketogenic diets because it's, it's not going to be the best for you simply because the body's preferred energy source, uh, glucose, for anaerobic activities is, uh, isn't going to be there, and so you're not going to get maximum results. Um, there might be some freaks that are exceptional, I don't know, but for me that's definitely overall true, and you know, it's up to you. It, it really depends on what your goals are, right? So if you're, not, if you're more interested in health, then for me personally, and if you test it out and see if it works for you, then ketosis, ketogenic diets might be best for you. And if, um, if you're interested in ma maximum athletic performance, then, then you got to go for that, I think, uh, and, and look at what's best for that, which tends to be eating a fair amount of carbohydrates. So I oversimplified a lot of things here, and that was intentional. Uh, I don't want to bog people down in lots of chemical details. I want them to get a good overview and understand the basics, and maybe that other stuff I can save for a later date. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll check you guys out later. Bye-bye.